We live in Kingstown and a lot of our friends move from the Kingstown area to Springfield after their kids get a little bit older, right? Yes, that is very common in this area. The main reason we see people moving from Kingstown to Springfield has to do with the school ratings. There are a lot more single family homes in that area than there are in the greater Kingstown area. That's true. And so those are just two of the reasons we see families relocate from this part of Fairfax County to Springfield. Because we're doing a series right now of the different areas inside of the Fairfax County, what areas make up Fairfax County, Springfield is a natural next best video for us because I believe this is our fourth video on the list. It's our fourth video and Springfield actually has about the third most transactions from last year and it is a huge part of Fairfax County. Right. The population of Springfield is nearly 100,000, which is close to 10% of Fairfax County population. So it's a pretty big area, pretty big deal. So we wanted to make sure we got a video out to you guys that explained the different areas, what to do there, the types of homes they have there, more information about those schools, and what your commute can look like. What's up, people? This is Abraham Walker, and I'm here with my wife and assistant, Crystal Walker, and this is Where to Live in Northern Virginia, where we talk about where you're going to live, things you're going to do, schools, commute. We talk about everything on this channel. And because of that, we get so many calls from people just like you who are moving to the Northern Virginia area or moving around the Northern Virginia area. So if you wanna get in touch with us, the best way to do it is to use our phone number or our email address. You can also text us and we are the individuals who respond to those messages. Absolutely. And you can also fill out the perfect home questionnaire, which is going to be linked down below. There you fill out a quick survey and it's going to ask you a few questions about what's bringing you to Northern Virginia, where you want to live and how we can best contact you. And one of us will reach out and set up a virtual meeting. So let's start the video right now. Springfield is a pretty big area and it's broken up into four sections. So you have Newington, North Springfield, Central Springfield, and probably most popular, West Springfield. We're gonna start off with the most affordable area in Springfield, and then we're going to end with what we consider the most popular. The average sales price in Newington Forest is gonna be about 600,000, but the average sales price for townhomes is gonna to be just over 400. Now townhomes in Newington Forest are usually gonna be between two to four bedrooms, pretty much all three levels, and none of them have garages, which is probably one of the reasons they're on the lower end of the price point. Exactly. Um, Newington Forest is a community that was built in the late 70s, early 80s, and is a healthy mix of both single family and townhome. So there is a pool, a field that can be leased or rented by its residents. There is basketball courts, tennis courts, and a community center. Remember we went to a birthday party we there? We did go to a birthday party. And that was the so, first time we went to a birthday party where there were actors. As, oh, uh, they had the little Disney princesses. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That was, that was interesting. I think our boys may have been the only only boys at that point. I believe so. <laughs> they had a great time. They had yeah, a great they time. Did. Anyway, so uh, Newington Forest, we're going to take a look at the different types of homes that are available there. First, we're going to take a look at the townhouses in the Newington Forest area. As you can see, this is where Newington Forest is. We have the mix and bowl here, which we'll talk about later on in the video. And we have DC over here. So as you can see, it's a nice commute to the Newington Forest area, but we're gonna see exactly why people choose to live over here. Let's look at a couple houses with the Google Street View. Like Krista already mentioned, we have townhouses that do not have garages, but we do have some in units that have a uh, nice size lots and there's off street parking. What I think is nice about Newington Forest that's different than the Japonica subdivision that we're going to look at in a few minutes is that they have off street parking and they also have the assigned parking. Japonica, when we talk about it, you'll see it's a tight fit. It's a tight fit. But this is what you get when you're looking at the townhouses, the townhouse community. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, they are a little bit older. And this is basically what most townhomes look like that were built in this time frame, the early 80s. This is what many subdivisions that were built around that time look like. One of the things about New and Forest that's really cool is you can see how many trees there are throughout the area, not just on the main streets, but on the side streets as well and that's because it's close to a couple of parks and so it's really maintained a lot of that aesthetic and it's really a nice peaceful area 
Exactly. Now that we've seen the townhouses, let's go take a look at the single family homes. The townhouses were located right over here on this South Run Stream Valley Park. And the single family homes are kind of mixed in between the townhouse community. Let's take a look and see what those single family houses look like. You see a lot of siding. We have a split level here. We have sidewalks, which is a, I'm a fan of sidewalks. And pretty much all the single families in this neighborhood have garages. Now this is a pipe stem. Okay, and I gotta say, uh, I'm not a fan of pipe stems. I'll never be a fan of pipe stems. And the main reason why I dislike pipe stems is the fact that your neighbors are no longer just these people that you could choose to speak to or you could choose to have a relationship with. On a pipe stem, you all have to get along because this little driveway here, this little driveway here, this is your responsibility that you share with your neighbors. So you wanna make sure you have a good relationship with them because you'll need to repave this road or resurface this road together. You'll also need to shovel this road together. You'll need to be respectful of parking for either parties or events that you have. It's too much responsibility given the fact that you don't get to interview these people <laughs> when you buy the property. So I'm, I'm not a fan of pipe stems. I know some of our clients have had pipe stems. They've been attracted to them. You'll never Never get me to be okay with pipe stems, but in Springfield particularly, particularly there are, are a lot of pipe stems. Just in this subdivision, there are a lot of pipe stems. So it's definitely something to keep in mind. We, I mean, we've had a listing in a pipe stem before and the owner told us about the headaches that they had exactly. in dealing with neighbors. Exactly. Um, so again, just not our favorite type of home. Not when there are other options, we should say. Yes, exactly. <laughs> From Newington Forest, we're gonna move on to Central Springfield and the subdivision we're gonna take a look at there is gonna be Japonica. I think Japonica is gonna be the newest neighborhood that's gonna be on today's list. These townhomes were built between the 1990s and the early 2000s. Now, like most townhouses, they're gonna be between two to four bedrooms. What I like about Japonica is they have homes with no garage, one and two car garages. Um, so that gives you a little bit more options as far as what the basement layout is gonna be. A lot of times when you're looking at townhouses, they're very similar. Um, and the difference really will be on that lower level, depending on if you do or don't have a garage. So let's take a look at Japonica. Here we have an address from Japonica on the map right here. You can see that Japonica is located on the eastern side of 95. They have quick access to the mixing bowl or the ability to get straight onto the interstate, which is nice for the commuters. They also can get to, I would say that they're gonna go to Springfield Metro Station, which is going to be right here. Yeah, they wouldn't go to the to Van Dorn Street. That, yeah. That's too far, that's too far. One thing I like about the Japonica neighborhood is that they also have quick access to both Springfield Mall and the Kingstown Town Center. So there's plenty of amenities that these homeowners have access to. So let's yeah. take a look at the Japonica subdivision. And Japonica is interesting because it actually borders Alexandria, Fairfax County. So I mean, really just two or three blocks over and you're in Alexandria. Abraham mentioned the proximity to the Franconia Springfield Metro and some of these units actually back up to the train tracks. The train tracks, yes. And depending on who you talk to, they will have different <laughs> feelings about living near the train tracks. So just keep that in mind that the train tracks are your are neighbors. Yeah, You're, like I said, some of them on Deborah Luce specifically, they back to the train tracks and there are trees back there, but you know, depending on the time of the year, it's gonna determine how much of that sound. The good news is that the trains are pretty respectful of blowing their horns. I don't think they actually can blow their horns inside of the residential community communities. So okay. I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue, but it is there. We had a client that has a, a property on the other side of the train tracks and they mentioned it. It's a thing. And just over there is a community pool. Right. So there is a, a pool for this homeowners association. What's interesting about Japonica is that it's really only one way out. I, I dislike one way out communities mm -hmm. because there's a lot of traffic during rush hour, rush hour times. So mm -hmm. 
So just know that there's one way out and it's a winding community. As you see, we go further and further back. The newer units are gonna be towards the back of the subdivision, of course. Like there's actually the train area there. Yeah, that's the train. The train area is right over here. You also have the- That's Inova. Inova. Inova the, Health Flex. Exactly. And then the Metro is right over here towards this area here. Mm -hmm. So you see nice style units, right? Since this is a, a little bit newer uh, townhomes, you're gonna have more modern creature comfort I'm not certain if they have washer and dryers hookups on the bedroom levels. I don't believe so. Mm -hmm. Well, and one other thing we want to point out is there's limited parking. Uh, so there's yes, very true. limited guest parking here towards the back of the neighborhood. So this is the back of the community here. And towards the back, there's limited street parking uh, or even guest parking. There's no visible parking pad. But towards the front of the neighborhood, there's some street parking, but once you get deeper in, it's kind of a hassle if you're gonna be a guest. I mean, as you can see all the yellow painted curbs, that means no parking, right? Right. So that's just something to take into consideration if you entertain or if you have a family with multiple cars. Exactly, exactly. So this see. is the guest parking, but you can see it's kind of in the center of the neighborhood. It is. Which again, if you don't live in the center of the neighborhood, that could be a little bit of a hassle. Exactly. Right now is a great time for us to go into just a brief intermission. We've already covered two of the four places that you can live inside of the Springfield area. Up next, we're gonna also talk about the schools, the commutes and things to do, so make sure you stay tuned. But I wanted to make sure I got to you before you clicked off of this video. These videos are done on your behalf, right? We do the research to kind of complement your research. And we look at this as a informal interview, right? Mm -hmm. Like you get to meet the team, I'm the person who is like the face of the company. Crystal handles the back end. So this is the whole squad, right? And so we wanted to introduce ourselves to you. And now you know who you're going to be working with when it's time for you to buy a home, sell a home, or invest in real estate in the Northern Virginia area. So reach out to us. Our phone number will be right here on the screen. You could call, text, or email us. We are the individuals who respond. Or you can fill out the Perfect Home Questionnaire, which is linked down below. Just answer a few questions, give us your contact info, and one of us will reach out. Okay, so let's get back to the rest of the show. The second to last area we're covering is called North Springfield. North Springfield, in my opinion, was the biggest surprise on the list because the houses were super cute. Super cute. Also, the neighborhood was cute. And I've never seen it before. I've just never seen it before. That's true. I mean, we've worked in Springfield a number of times. I think the bulk of the transactions we've done have been in either Newington or West Springfield. That's true. So That's we true. haven't spent a lot of time in North Springfield. And when we got to this particular neighborhood, we were kind of taken aback because it is just beautiful. Mature trees. Mature trees, almost like a park-like setting. It is, it um, is. And I guess that's because it's so close to Lake Akatine. Yeah. park and so maybe that's why but it's really kind of serene well-maintained lawns we went by on a weekend and it was peaceful and i like the style of homes older homes so right. most of the neighborhood was built in like the late 50s early 60s so you see a lot of those you know split levels by levels ramblers raised ramblers so really nice style smaller and i think what i like is uh a lot of the newer homes are very similar yes and so when you go into these older neighborhoods you just see a little bit more personality in the homes and i think that we got that. a lot more character and i think we got that when we visited north springfield exactly exactly so north springfield if you all are looking for a house a single family house this is a great place i think if you like homes with some some substance to it <laughs> and if you're looking to get a single family home you know for $600,000, you know, average sales price was about $603,000 last year. And you're looking at getting a pretty nice size lot because the lot size there is anywhere from like a half an acre to even over an acre, which in Fairfax County, that is a premium. That is a premium. So let's take a look at it on the big screen. We have North Springfield put up on the map and in particular the neighborhood that we were referencing. So let's take a look at some of the houses in this particular community. As you can see from the map, look at the size of these lots. Right? Look at the size of these lots and that, that circle there. And also, these are all nice sized lots. They will put like 10 houses on that little street, that little, where they only have three there. That's true, that's true. So you can see what Crystal was referring to. They have these little cute little homes here. Painted brick. For a second, I actually thought that was stucco, but you never uh, see stucco homes in Northern Virginia. That's true, you never see stucco homes. You got your one levels are probably just like a basement on the back of the property. Mm -hmm. Cute little contemporary properties. 
lots of mature trees as you can see well maintained lawns like we said just huge lots i mean front and back lots which you know, I don't know what you need all the space for, but if you like a lot of space, it's there. And what I like particularly is a lot of times when you see older neighborhoods in Fairfax County, they're not as well kept as this. That's true. Um, a lot of times when you turn into a older neighborhood, if it's not in the middle of a revitalization, I mean, there are not a lot of tear downs, you usually don't see such well kept properties in older neighborhoods. And this is one where you don't really see a lot of tear downs. You're not seeing a lot of additions even, but what you do see, Oh, wow. <laughs> and the interstate is right there. The interstate is right there, which is why we, we noticed that. How do we get back? How oh, do we get... No. Anyway, um, so yeah, so that was North Springfield. <laughs> and this is the interstate. And this is 495. Mm -hmm. Towards the beginning of the video, Abraham alluded to a number of our friends and neighbors leaving our area to move to Springfield. And specifically, we meant West Springfield. West Springfield is very popular amongst families, particularly military families in Northern Virginia. And so we see people leaving our area all the time to relocate to West Springfield. We'll cover why in greater detail in just a minute, but there are a couple of subdivisions that are really particularly popular. And we're gonna start with Daventry. Daventry is the only community or the only neighborhood on today's list that has condos, townhouses, and single family homes. Daventry is a community of about 900 total homes. There are 500 townhouses, around 200 uh, single family homes, and just under 200 condos. And it's the only true subdivision that is, I guess it's kind of akin to the Kingstown subdivision that it has those different types of homes. It also has similar amenities with the pools and the tot lots and the basketball court, but it's significantly, significantly smaller than Kingstown. But it's in one of the top rated high school pyramids. And so sure. that draws a lot of families to that area. Since we're going to talk about all three types of properties, we'll give you a quick rundown of what you can expect price-wise. Single families are going to average about $900 $55,000. And those single families are usually gonna be three to five bedrooms, usually two car garages on a nice size lot, probably between like a quarter acre to a half acre lot. Townhouses, not much lot there, just like any other townhouse. Um, but they have units with and without garages. We even saw a few with two car garages. And the average sales price for those is gonna be around 600,000. And then you're probably looking at paying under 300 for one of the one or two bedroom condos in Ramblewood, which is the condominium within Daventry. We have Daventry on the map right here. You can see its distance to the Washington DC area. Most people I would say know the Daventry area for its entrance off of Old King Mill Road here. Let's go take a look at it so you can see what I'm talking about. And there you go, you got your nice little placard there. What's funny about Daventry, I find, is that when if you enter through this road, you'll think to yourself, oh, okay, I'm gonna see some houses. Nope, nope, it's a long, 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 long drive to get to the actual properties. And then you see the townhouses start to appear on the left-hand side here. Nice little neighborhood though, ducked off, uh, tucked away into this little kind of peaceful portion of the community. We have some single family homes down this street here. As you can see, Google Street View does not have access to enter the communities. Townhouses, I guess the townhouses are all on the left side of the community. It appears that way. It looks way. that way. But now I do know as you get deeper into the community, there are some townhouses on the right sides because they're, they're just not that many single family homes. But this is the main street here. The Aventry is gonna be the closest of all of our subdivisions to the Fairfax County Parkway. So there are actually a couple of trails that will lead you over in that direction. And along that trail, you're gonna find their swimming pool. You'll also probably pass their multi-purpose court, their tennis courts. In the community, they also have a couple of tot lots like a few of the other neighborhoods in Springfield, it's close to parks and has like that park-like setting or feel to it. And so there are even a few uh, paved trails and bike trails that will connect you to Lake Akatink Park. So we said that North Springfield was close to Lake Akatink Park and West Springfield is just on the other side of that same park. Now that you know where you're going to live, let's talk about the schools your little kiddos will be attending. Schools are a very important part of the home search for many parents. So we always like to tell folks in our watch the videos that you wanna make sure you confirm the school 
that is attached to any property you're looking at. And that's because in Fairfax County, there are a lot of schools. There are 28 high schools. And so you can be in a neighborhood or a community and your neighbor a few blocks away, they may be zoned for a different school. So we exactly. always say to check out the Fairfax County Boundary Locator. Yep. And that's important in this area too, because there are three high schools that serve Springfield. That's gonna be John Lewis High, South County High, and West Springfield. And so since you have those three schools and those three schools are rated differently. Yes, uh, very differently. Two of them are pretty highly rated and those are gonna be West Springfield and South County. Uh, West Springfield specifically. South County is kind of, I guess, what you would say as far as ratings in the middle of the pack. Yep. But West Springfield specifically is that school that many families leave other parts of Fairfax County to move into that better rated high school pyramid of West Springfield. Exactly. And we even see some families moving their kids are younger because the West Springfield Elementary School is also pretty highly rated. One of the advantages of living in an area like Springfield is they have a lot of highly rated elementary schools too. Yes, I think that whole pyramid, the West Springfield pyramid, the schools on the lower level, absolutely. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> the schools on the lower levels do mirror oftentimes the school on the higher level. Exactly. And so there are also some advanced academic placement centers in Springfield. So that's gonna be schools that offer AP mm -hmm. for lower levels. And so there are just two off the top of my head. I know Sangster and Springfield Estates, which are both highly rated elementary schools. They offer that AP program. There's also Orange Hunt, which is in Orange Hunt Estates. That school has an immersion program, a German immersion program. Mm. And a number of the schools also offer the foreign language elementary school program. So overall, the schools in Springfield are pretty highly rated. And that is another reason it's highly desirable amongst families. Next up on our list is commute. So we have the Springfield area right over here on the map. And let's zoom out just a little bit. If you're going to be working in DC, or the Pentagon, I would say that your commute is going to be about the same in the uh, Springfield area. The easiest way to get to both of those locations is going to be through 395. You could jump on 395 right off of uh, Franconia Road. There is this interesting organ, it looks like, right? This little vein system. This is called the mixing bowl. It can be very confusing, but after a few times missing your ramp, you'll get it, you'll get it. Just know, you know, Give yourself two or three weeks and then you'll get to understand what is going on right <laughs> here. What is going on right here? So this is the mixing bowl. It's a very popular meeting ground for cars. The metro station that you'll use is the Springfield Franconia metro station. If you're doing slugging, if you're a slugster, there is a pickup station right over here off of Old King Mill Road. If they're, they're building a new building for it. There's also the Daventry slug as well. So those are your two slug lines. Slugging is the process of getting into a stranger's car and going to a predetermined location in the city or in the uh, Arlington area. It's a very cool feature put on by the residents of Northern Virginia. It's only in Northern Virginia too. Mm -hmm. That's the crazy thing that it's not like a, the National Slugging Association. Also, you have the Roland Valley Park and Rides. You can actually park at Roland Valley and you can take a ride to the Franconia Springfield Metro, or you can actually get all the way to the Pentagon there. Exactly. So that's another reason people like this area is there are a couple of bus lines that will take you directly to the Pentagon from various Springfield neighborhoods. So that is another reason that's pretty popular. And in Daventry, there's actually a Daventry Pentagon carpool. Yes. Again, this is a pretty popular area for military personnel. Like I said, a couple of different ways to get to the Pentagon. And also, if you zoom in a little, you can see its proximity to Fort Belvoir, which is right, not too yes. far away from uh, Springfield. So again, that's another reason that the area is popular. Yeah, so Springfield is here, Fort Belvoir is right here. Another employment base that you may be working at is the Tyson's Corner area. So it's just a jaunt on the 495. And as you can see, you can get to 495 super quickly. Then we have the Reston Herndon corridor right here, which you would most likely take the Fairfax County Parkway up to work if you're working up that way. That's about it. That's how you would get around if you were living in the Springfield area. Now that we've finished with the boring stuff, it's time to talk about what you're going to do when you're not working, right? These are the things you're going to do. We're gonna just hit a couple places, hot spots for Springfield. First up is the rec center. The year rec center is gonna be South Run Rec Center. In Fairfax County, there are several rec centers that kind of serve as community pillars 
for the different regions and they're conveniently located too, I find. So for Springfield, Springfield has one, which is kind of strange to say it's such a large area, but it only has one. But I guess you can get to the other ones fairly quickly. But let's take a look at where the South Run Rec Center is located on the map here. Also, you can see there's Burke Lake Park right over there. There's a video we did about that. We'll put it right there, Burke Lake Park. So South Run Rec Center is your rec center of choice. You can see it's a very large establishment here. There's also the Go Ape Zipline Adventure Park. There's also a dog park there. So if you're not familiar with the rec centers, rec centers here typically have a athletic facility or fitness center, so typically a gym. And Fairfax County residents can get a gym membership there and you can use that membership at any of the nine rec centers throughout the county. But there's also usually tennis courts, indoor swimming pool, basketball court. So Fairfax County rec centers are a great place to do like pickup games and meet other people. And they have outdoor fields, usually football, softball, all the other outdoor sports that people do. Um, yes. So one of the running themes, uh, you probably heard me mention over and over again when I was talking about the different areas, is parks. Springfield has quite a few parks. Um, South Run would be considered technically a park. And then there's also one of my favorite, uh, which is Hidden Pond. Really cool park in Springfield. Closer to, I would say, the Western Springfield neighborhoods yes. or West Springfield neighborhoods. So it's a really great place for hiking, nice trails. Skipping rocks. Skipping rocks. Yes. Our boys love to skip rocks at that yes. creek. And also, we mentioned several times Lake Akatink Park. Yep. That's like 500 acres of woods there. It's huge. Um, there's marina there. A carousel, just like at Lee District Park. I don't uh, know. I've I never heard of- I they use it though. I don't know. They don't use the one at Lee District Park. I've seen that video about yeah. that. Um, picnic area. So it's a great park. Again, it's right in the middle of North and West Springfield. Mm -hmm. So great place to convene and have a picnic. Um, so parks are a big thing here. So if you're an outdoorsy person, miles and miles of trails. Miles. Fairfax County has one of the greatest park systems in the country. Like yes. we just have so many and they are all just absolutely beautiful. They're well maintained. And again, just miles of trail. I took up hiking since I moved here because there's a lot of walking that can be done. One attraction you should know about before we move on to the restaurant part of the things to do list is the Go Ape Zipline course, right? I didn't know that this was a thing that people did, but it actually exists. We actually just got this, what, maybe two years ago? Two or three years ago. Now. Two or three years ago. So here's the Go Ape website. As you can see, these people are enjoying themselves, zipping through the forest here. And there's a Go Ape in a Springfield. It's actually in the South Run Rec Center. Yeah. So it's in that park. So if you're a go aper or if you like zip lines, uh, this is available to you right down the street. So after all of that running around the parks, you may get hungry and you may want to look for a place to eat. So we're going to tell you about a few of our favorite places to eat in Springfield. And we're going to start with your favorite restaurant in all of Northern Virginia. Yes, Mike's American Grill. I think it's like the second most popular restaurant in all of the DC metro area. If you go, grab yourself the burger. You can't lose with the burger. Although Chris doesn't like the burger. She feels like the bread. bread is too soft. They make all their own bread, and a lot of their bread is really good. I right. love the Aussie rolls. I don't like the hamburger, but like I don't hamburger. eat their burgers. I um, like the burgers. Uh, they also have some good barbecued ribs. They also have a, a great Southwest chicken salad. It's not chicken salad, it's just chicken on the salad. Mm -hmm. But they have a great, great salad, smoked salmon. You love their salmon. The salmon is delicious. Also, you, you have to finish with the bread pudding, the white chocolate bread pudding. It is the as best. Well. It's it the is best the thing best. on the menu, in my opinion. Yes. Even their sides are great. Like, I mean, they've made Brussels sprouts. Our kids love the Brussels sprouts. Oh. So, yeah. Brussels sprouts there. Everything. Everything is delicious. There. Everything is great there. I mean, I'll eat the burger, but it's not my first choice. I wouldn't order it on my own. But yes. everything there is great. We love it. Love it. Next up, we have Della J's, which is a soul food restaurant in uh, Central Springfield. It's located in a small strip mall right off the interstate very unassuming place and we were quite surprised when we went there at how good the food is yes they have great cornbread great cornbread great collard greens uh, and take this from us we both cook and cook well and we're southern we're yes. from new orleans so we're really tough on restaurants particularly soul food yes and this is i would say it's the only good soul food i've had in the entire DC metro area. And we've tried a lot of them. And we have tried them all. Yes. Uh, because sometimes you just don't feel like cooking soul food. So you wanna go out to a restaurant and have someone do it for you, go to Della J's. If you're in Springfield, you have got to check it out. Like I said, their collard greens, 
I want to say they're better than mine. I don't want to say that, I'm gonna be honest, so I will say it. Mm. If you're like most people, once you make it home at the end of the day, you don't really leave your neighborhood. So it's important that the community you live in has those creature comforts, the things that you need to be comfortable so you can run out and do quick errands. And I think that Springfield is great for that. Um, so there's the Springfield Mall that has a lot of those major national chain stores. Um, so people like that. You're only a few miles away from the Kingstown Town Center. So whatever is lacking in Springfield there, you can find in Kingstown. But what I really like about Springfield is they have so many strip malls and not strip malls in the sense that there's like, you know, little knickknack shops. I mean, like there are lots of pharmacies, what? supermarkets mm -hmm. in those strip malls. So pretty much every community has a couple of those strip malls. So you're never far from a supermarket. Exactly. You can run out and grab an onion or whatever you, you know, you're out of without having to, you know, head far out. They also have a Trader Joe's too. They have the only Trader Joe's in this immediate area. They do. It's always packed. Mm -hmm. Parking's terrible. Yeah. But, but other than that, other than that, we have a Trader Joe's and that's really cool. Exactly. We talked about the neighborhoods. We covered the schools, commute, things to do. The next thing for you to do is to click on the next video in the playlist. We're covering all of Fairfax County, all of the areas that make up Fairfax County. We will see you on the next video. Peace.